the legacy of Liz Cheney is going to be about courage. Uh, I uh, will do uh, everything I can to ensure uh, that uh, the former president never again gets anywhere near the Oval Office. In 2001, when Dick Cheney has become the vice president for George W. Bush, Liz Cheney gets uh, hired into the State Department. At the end of the Bush-Cheney administration, Liz became a frequent guest on Fox News and spent a good six years or so as just this just acid-tongued critic of the Obama-Biden administration. I think what it goes to also, Sean, is the arrogance of this administration, the arrogance of this president. You know, it doesn't seem to matter to him if the people who work for him lie. The best you can say about him is that he's unacquainted with the truth. In 2016, Liz decided to run for the House, and, and she basically, you know, embraced what was the celebrity idea of, I'm a Cheney, I know Washington, I can get stuff done. And here's Liz Cheney just two years into the House, becoming the number three Republican leader. Her father, he did hold the same exact position, but it took him six years to get there. And that was considered lightning fast. It really showed you her ambition and, and her drive and what she wanted to do. Everybody figured then, this is a woman who wants to become probably the first female House Republican speaker. She was a loyal Republican, was helping raise money for Trump reelect. She was on the team, so to speak. This president has shown um, that he is willing consistently to walk away from bad deals. He walked away from the nuclear deal with Iran. He walked away from the INF treaty. Uh, this is a president who has demonstrated his willingness and, and his ability and his determination not to let the United States be taken advantage of. During the Capitol insurrection, as they were fleeing the House floor, and she was looking for Hakeem Jeffries, the most senior Democrat that was still on the Capitol complex. And the first thing she said to him was, we have to start impeachment. She knew full well that this was going to possibly imperil her career. She made the decision that she was going to always speak her own truth. I've been clear in my views about uh, President Trump and, and the extent to which following, the extent to which following January 6th, uh, I, don't, I don't believe that he should be playing a role in the future of the party or the country. On that high note, <laughs> McCarthy never attended another press conference with Cheney again. It would take another six weeks or so before they formally pushed her out of leadership. Another month or six weeks, the House voted to create this January 6th select committee. Pelosi gave one of her spots to Liz Cheney, and Liz Cheney accepted. She was essentially accepting a Democratic spot. And if she just sort of had stayed quiet, she might have been able to navigate this and win re-election, still be in leadership and not have any real trouble at all. But at that point, Liz Cheney said no, she was going to go after Trump every chance she had. Liz Cheney, having lost her uh, congressional primary here in Wyoming, now faces the next question of what to do with the rest of her career. There are some who really do want her to run for president. She's, she's not naive. She knows that this era's Republican Party is probably almost definitely not going to nominate someone who is being so much of a critical force against the former president. But she believes that there needs to be a candidate who will take on Trump every single day.